What's up? What's up? What's up, everybody? How is everybody doing today? I'm Ryan Newpool. This is episode 179 of the Noob School Show. Super excited for this one. And I'm more excited that it's Thursday, September 8th, as I'm recording this. And guess what that means? It's NFL season. It's officially here. Thursday night football kicks off tonight. I don't know if this will go out before that game happens, but Bills Rams tonight. I'm super excited for that. We all love football, so excited to watch that game tonight and uh, maybe place a few bets or a few uh, props or something on that tonight. But first and foremost, that's not why we're here. We're here to talk to our special guest today. Today we have Will Ty, the co-founder at Better Fantasy. I'm going to bring Will on here and chat. Will, how are you, my friend? What's up, dude? Yeah, just so pumped for tonight. I mean, it's like it's. I just think about the NBC like football theme song coming on and I get chills just oh, thinking about it. <laughs> just yes so yes I know it's uh it's the highlight for all of us you know being in this industry we all love NFL football season it's just uh it's the best you know there's nothing better than uh kicking back and and having a few snacks having a few drinks watching some football having a few bets out there so awesome my friend and you're in Ohio so I'm assuming uh, you're what you're a Browns fan so actually not no I'm from New Jersey Ryan so oh. um yeah, I'm a Giants fan, but it's hard not to root for the Browns here. Like the the community here is just so passionate about their football team. Um, oh, yeah, like they're they're right up there with Buffalo, you know. So right. if I could see any team besides mine win a Super Bowl, I, I would choose the Browns or the Bills because that their fans would just go crazy. It would mean so much to them. You know, it's funny. I've found myself like adopting the Bills over the last like maybe three years. I, I've kind of jumped on the Josh Allen train early and just. I, I went to a, a sports bar here in Orlando called like the Harry Buffalo. And this is a side note, but the Harry Buffalo. And it was like a Buffalo Bills themed bar in the middle of Orlando, downtown Orlando. And I went to a game there and I was like, oh my gosh, this like culture of this is like fanatics. And I was in love. I was like, this is amazing. Oh yeah, let's go Bills. So I've kind of adopted them. I'm excited to watch them this year. <laughs> Absolutely. It doesn't even matter like how the game is tonight. Like if it's a, if it's a bad game, that's totally irrelevant. Just the fact that football's back is, is, everything absolutely well cool well let's jump right in will i'm excited you're on here i've been wanting to talk to you for quite a while and i really want to learn more about better fantasy but first uh tell me about yourself and uh some of the career paths you've chosen to kind of get to co-founder at better fantasy what led up to that yeah so you know i mean i'll give you sort of the abridged version as best i can um so grew up in new jersey like i just mentioned um my dad has always been an entrepreneur he's a, an independent sales rep and so He's always been working with startups on getting their products to market. And so ever since I've been, you know, in, in like middle school and high school, I've sort of just been like picking up what he's been talking about. Like I've kind of learned like, okay, here's what an options pool is like just little stuff like that. And it was sort of seated in my mind that, that this entrepreneurial thing was kind of interesting. Um, but I never really pursued it until, until now, obviously. Um, fast forward to college, I uh, went to St. Bonaventure, which is just south of Buffalo, go Bonnie's. Um, jumped around the majors. Like I started out in journalism, then I went to, uh, you know, a bunch of different things, ended up in marketing communications. And so my first job uh, out of college was working in, in marketing on the agency side. So I worked with Susan and Dill Driscoll, who are really, really uh, veterans of, of the advertising industry. Dill founded Momentum. Uh, they both founded Ignition, which are big agencies. Um, and so it was great to work with them on a very personal level. Like we worked in their basement at their house in Lake Placid. Um, and so I got to be with them all the time and being around those two very successful entrepreneurs sort of seeded that idea to me even further. And I kind of wanted to uh, look into the, the, the opportunity of like creating my own business where we could, you know, create jobs for people and then make an impact on the world in a positive way. And so that was sort of getting into my head a little bit more. Um, And then 2020 hit and COVID, obviously. Um, And then Sahil, my co-founder and I were talking um, in my driveway about uh, placing a bet on our fantasy leagues matchups. We couldn't do it. We couldn't come to terms. He was the favorite. So I naturally wanted points. I wanted there to be a point spread. He said no. And we were like, okay, why can't we do this against the house? You know, why do we need to have two people to agree on the terms of a bet to make it happen? And so in late 2020, we created a very simple like web platform that essentially allowed us to manually input all of the uh, rosters in our fantasy league. And then we let our league mates pick who they thought would win each matchup. And then whoever got the most picks right won. we gave them 20 bucks. 
right? cool. just because we want to see if people were interested in this idea. Uh, that spread from our home league to uh, my college league and one of the Hills college leagues. And it just kind of naturally spread and people uh, were interested in it. And so we kind of thought to ourselves, OK, is this something that we want to kind of really jump into? Um, and, and after talking about it for a while, the answer was yes. And so fast forward to um, 2020, we raised a little bit of money, uh, launched our beta version of our app. And now we're here in 2021 uh, doing some more cool things. So that's that's the the short of it. Dude, that's amazing. I love when a product is born out of, you know, like just passion of what you're doing, right? And kind of seeing a need. And I, I totally feel that like when I'm playing fantasy football, I always over the years, just in general fantasy football matchups, I'm always looking at like the the Yahoo expected points. And then, I, yeah, going next level, like, oh, I'm predicted to win by 30 points. I don't think I'm going to cover that or whatever, right? You're always thinking in those betting terms, even when playing fantasy. So I'm assuming that's kind of what better fantasy we're going to dive into more what all you're doing here but sounds like it kind of attacked that problem yeah exactly the main issue for us ryan was like you know we're here in the height of fantasy football season it's september 8th you know mm -hmm. kickoff is tonight everybody's interested in their league but when you're two and seven and you're out of the playoff picture <laughs> you know it's a little bit of a different animal and so we wanted a way for people to be able to stay engaged with their league because fantasy football for me personally is like one of the best parts of my life because it allows me to stay connected with my friends you know, I live in Cleveland now, everybody's around the country, but fantasy is what keeps us together in a way, like not to sound too dramatic about it, but it really is. And so the more we can maintain engagement in the fantasy league, I think the better off people's lives are, frankly. <laughs> yeah, a hundred percent agree with that. So better fantasy, B-E-T-T-O-R fantasy. I'm going to pull it up here on the screen and let's, uh, let's dive into kind of the meat and the guts of, of what's going on here and what you guys are, are really doing. Uh, so if you want to yeah. kind of dive in, talk a little bit more about the concept what you guys have uh, and all of that, that'd be amazing. Yeah, so you can see on the right, um, there, there's a screenshot of our platform. Um, and essentially what we do is we allow fantasy players to sync their leagues. And then we display odds, spreads, money lines, overs and unders for the different matchups in their league. So we take their rosters um, and then we have an algorithm that pops out, the spread, the money line, the over and the other for each team. And then users can go ahead and pick who they think is going to win, pick the spread, pick the over, pick the under with our free to play currency, which is called better coins. Mm. Um, and then if they win their picks, uh, they're able to cash out in the shop for gift cards, prizes, and then also uh, help raise money for our charity partners, which is pretty cool. That's amazing. That's super cool. So, so there's not real money floating around here. Like you said, it's, it's, it's better coins. Is that what you call it? Better coins that they're getting and then they can get prizes. Is the, is the thought in the future to do something around real money or is that just too much to even a, a, attack and tackle? Um, no, it's definitely the plan for us moving forward. Um, so like I said, last year when we raised our, our initial pre-seed round, um, it, it wasn't enough to go after a sports betting license. Um, and, you know, we weren't, experienced in the in the industry enough to even think about doing that and so we launched free to play just so we could get the product out there get people's feedback and really Ryan we want to see if we wanted to quit our full-time jobs and pursue this full-time um, which we, which we did last November um, and so the, those first few months gave us the confidence and and um, the desire to to go ahead and do this full-time Good for you. That's amazing. So, so how's it going? So uh, uh, how's the the traction been? How's the interest level been? Um, where are you guys at from a, a momentum side? Yeah, absolutely. So we capped out um, our beta test last year, which was really awesome for us. We wanted to get a few thousand people on the platform. Again, just to get that initial feedback, see if the market was perceptive to it, see if people stayed on the app during the whole year, right? That's one thing if people download and try it out for a couple of days, but we saw some really good retention um, over the course of the fantasy season, which was great for us. And so, yeah, like I mentioned, that beta test uh, last year was really to see if we had the conviction if the market, uh, if the product market fit was there to go ahead full time with it. Um, and it definitely was. And so after last year, um, we started to look into how we can really turn this thing up to 100. Um, we looked at the feedback that we got from our community. And the number one thing was folks wanted to bet real money on the platform. Right. And so uh, doing that on the fantasy league betting side of things was was going to be a little bit more arduous and require a sports betting license. But doing our player prop over under games, survival, which is a, an in-game betting experience that we have, and then our player prop pools, those could all be done with DFS. And so we spent the last um, couple months, uh, about six months it took us to 
get our legal opinion for DFS, get all of our vendor partnerships in place, uh, and then actually stand up the, the product from a technology side to enable real money buy-ins in our DFS contests, which we're launching today, which we're super pumped about. Today. That's awesome. Yeah. Good. Congrats on that. That's amazing. That's a Thank super you, cool news. Tell us a little bit more about that. I mean, I know you kind of just uh, touched the surface on it, but I mean, how excited are you for the DFS side of this? I think it has, yeah. so, I, I think there's a lot of future there with that. Yeah. I mean, I'm beyond pumped. Um, it's, it's, it's hard to explain how much it means like to have this accomplishment under our belt. Um, just because this is personally like the first time for me and the rest of my co-founders that we've gone out and, and started a company. And so each milestone we hit is, is just a huge deal for us personally. Um, we pour obviously a ton of time into this sacrifice a lot in our lives, um, miss some pretty big life events sometimes to, to work on this. And so to, to have this done and to have it wrapped up and to have it launched is really special for us. Um, plus on the other side, it's just going to be cool to like, be on the other side of the, of the bets, so to speak, you know, like I've been, I've been betting on the sports books for years now. Um, and so to be on the other side of that's a pretty, pretty cool feeling like looking into our admin portal and seeing, uh, you know, what, what picks people are making. It's, it's just, it's so cool. It, it really is awesome. That's amazing. That's really cool. Congrats on that. You know, the, the fantasy, um, journey that we've been down, you know, going from standard leagues of fantasy football to there, you know, maybe, I don't know, was it three, four years ago where DFS was just like hot as ever, right? I'm not saying it's not now, but it was like the thing to do three, four years ago. And it was like, ah, oh, what's, what's season long football, fantasy football and all of that. And now I think you're starting to see a little bit of a balance, right? Where you're getting a little bit of both. Now you're getting a lot of sports betting in and it sounds like you're kind of mixing all of this together and merging it all together into one really cool experience uh, for, for people, which I think is amazing. Thanks, man. Yeah. It's been, a, it's been so fun to build it. And so, and even more fun to get people's feedback, like seeing what they like, what they don't like, and then iterating on that, giving people what they want. It's, it's, it's a really cool experience. So is it just football currently, or do you have other sports that you're actually uh, doing this for? Yeah. So for, for the fantasy sports side of things, um, we're, we're right now we're only football, um, okay. but we have player props and survival available for baseball and NBA too. Um, that's, that's a big thanks to our data provider, sports data. Um, they do a great job in getting us, uh, different algorithms and different APIs that we need to properly stand those, uh, different sports up. You don't have to plug them. I love sports data. Yeah, they're, they're awesome. Amazing company. So yeah, we'll give them a little, uh, shameless plug here in the middle of this as well. Um, but anyway, so, um, yeah, so tell me about the future what's the future look like for you guys i'm assuming you got some big plans uh, but what's kind of the future look like Wh where are you headed yeah so the future ryan um is is pretty simple for us we currently have uh, a lead investor for our next fundraising round um we're really pumped about that it's it's a credited uh vc which is you know a big deal last year when we raised our initial pre-seed round it was mostly friends and family um so it's you know People that know you, people that have a relationship with you, they're willing to give you money. Um, it's different when a VC comes in and says, yeah, we, we like your business model. We like the team. We want to give you a ton of money to, to execute on this. And so that, that, that's really big for us. Um, we're currently looking to close out our round with some more strategic investors. So we want to get as much smart money onto our cap table as possible. And so that's going to be um, the next few weeks to a couple months for us potentially. Um, and then after that comes in, we're just going to be looking to scale, keep taking that user feedback, um, keep talking to our early adopters. I try to talk to 10 early adopters a day um, and just keep getting their feedback, keep iterating on it. And then the product will speak for itself over, over the course of uh, the next, this football season. Well, congrats on uh, kind of the next round being started and, and kind of heading down the right path there. That's amazing. I mean, getting funding is um, is never easy and it's always a challenge and always something that, uh, you know, the people when funding it got to believe in the product. And so there's clearly a belief there, which is amazing. So, you know, then once you get that, it's, uh, it's off to the races, like you said. So, um, uh, scaling moving forward and I'm assuming, you know, just increasing user base as well. But I did love what you just said there at the end, you know, always, uh, geez, reaching out to 10 people a day that are using it and understanding it. Cause you really got to kind of understand what the, people like what they don't like how they're feeling and and 
I just urge you not to lose sight of that as you continue growing. And I know it sounds like you're not going to, but that's a, that's a really cool quality to have. I'm glad you said that. Yeah. hundred percent, man. It's, it's critically important. Cause I think that's, you know, possibly one of the downfalls of companies as they scale and as they get bigger, you know, they start to get so big that they kind of lose sight of the actual people because there's so many of them. Right. And like, <laughs> I get it. I understand how that is, but keeping that at the forefront is amazing. So very cool. Very cool. Man, you've probably had quite the journey here, you know, kind of jumping into the entrepreneurial experience kind of out of out of nowhere, out of left field. Right. And kind of jumping in. Give us, I don't know, just some sort of more on like the business side or the, the just running a company side. One of the challenges that you've really come across or that you've maybe you downplayed. Right. You're like, ah, I didn't really see this coming, but it's been a challenge throughout the last three years doing this. Yet, Do you have anything on your mind that might fit that that bill? Um. Yeah, I think the, the biggest challenge for me personally um, is riding the emotional waves of being an entrepreneur. Like you have days, Ryan, you know this, where everything's coming up aces, you know, it's just good news after good news after good news. And then the next day, you know, you, you, it's not so good news. And so I think the biggest challenge for me that I've started to get a little bit better at, thankfully, is riding those emotions, not getting too high, not getting too low, really making sure to prioritize, you know, your mental health in a way that, that I personally wasn't beforehand. Um, so that's been the biggest challenge for me is really riding those emotions um, and learning how to handle them specifically, mm -hmm. um, which is, it, it's easier for some than others um, yeah. goes without saying, but I think the the main thing that I've tried to practice is not getting too high with the good news and not, not getting too low with the good news or the bad news. Did you play sports? I did. Yeah. Yeah. That's a, that's a common mentality, right? That I know I always brought to playing and to coaching is, and it's not something everybody can do well, but if you're able to kind of like, nothing's too low, nothing's too high, kind of stay in that middle ground and understand that there's going to be goods and bads and you're going to be on both spectrums, man, you have such a mental edge over others in the sporting, like when you're playing and when you're coaching, you know, things of that nature in the business world, it translates right over as well. That's such a great point. I experience it every day as well with, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then, uh, but no, you can't get that way. You kind of got to be here. Right. And, and move on. So not that we can't celebrate, but I think, uh, keeping it even keel is a great lesson. Thank you for sharing that with the, with the audience. Oh, of course. Yeah. Awesome. Well, cool. Well, tell us more about how we would get the, the app. I, mean, I know you're on app store, you're on Google. I'm assuming it's pretty easy there. I know it's better fantasy, B E T T O R fantasy.com. But if somebody listening wanted to get in, dive in, I mean, fantasy leagues are starting up football, starting up. So what's going on now that they can do, how do they get it? Yeah. So definitely hit us up um, on the app stores. You can get the links to download our app on our website. Um, would love it. Love it. Love it. Like we said before, if you reached out to our, um, our team, you can access us via support at betterfantasy.com. Um, and if you want to sign up for a 15 minute user research session with me, I would love nothing more than that. Um, also, we're live in 21 states now for our DFS contest. You can see the full list of states there. Um, so we would love it if, if people started to, um, you know, just kind of get a sense of what we're all about and let us know what they like and they don't like. That's amazing. Yeah, we'll put the links out there as well. That way people can just click on them right in the show notes that we have out here. But yeah, I'd urge everybody to get out there, check out Better Fantasy. I think it's, uh, I'm excited for where you guys are headed. I think it's going to be fun. And you know, there's a lot of companies in this space and things going on, but uh, I love seeing, you know, all of you succeed. So this is going to be an amazing experience. Uh, any last words for the audience here, Will? Anything we missed? Anything you wanted to touch on? Uh, always something I like to ask uh, before we jump off. Yeah. Ready for this? I'm going to give you my rookie of the year pick. Oh, I am ready. Okay. Jerome Ford, Cleveland running back. He's going to be the rookie of the year. This is a long shot. I mean, a long shot. Like he might not even be available on your sports book. I was going to say, are there odds? Or what are yeah, there? But this, if you can find it, um, this guy is super talented. Uh, he's just an incredible player. The Browns are obviously going to have to run it a ton this year uh, without their quarterback. So uh, good offensive line. Just keep keep that keep that name in the back of your head. If he's on your waiver wire, go pick him up. Uh, if you can sprinkle a little action on him, I like that too. Jerome Ford I came out of Cincinnati. That. He's an electric player. I love that. That's awesome. Well, we know Cincinnati had a great year last year, so yeah, that's uh, I'll go look out on all my places and see if I can find anything. But thanks for sharing that. Who you got tonight? Uh, I don't know if this will be published before the game, but uh, hey, yeah. we'll say it before the game. You got Bills or Rams tonight? Oh, uh, my my mind says. Rams getting two and a half. Um, my heart, my heart says Bills. Um, 
flip a coin. I'll yeah. go with my heart. I'm gonna go Buffalo Bills Mafia, baby. Yeah, I am too. I and again, I don't know if it's hard or what, but I I, I think the Bills are gonna cover tonight and take care of business. Uh, but we'll see. That's the beauty of it. Nobody ever really knows. So yep. you don't know until it happens. You don't know. Well, Will, I really appreciate uh, you coming on. I look forward to a couple years down the road having you back on and talking about the success Better Fantasy has had and, and kind of where you're at in the future. Absolutely, in, Ryan. Uh, awesome. Thank you, Ryan. It's been a pleasure, man. All right, Will. Take care. That was Will Ty of BetterFantasy.com. Super excited to see where they head, bringing the action to your fantasy league. Awesome concept. We'll put the show notes out uh, tomorrow whenever this is released, uh, betterfantasy.com. So really excited there. Hey, everybody, really appreciate you tuning in. Appreciate your attention to this show. That was episode 179, so we're creeping up towards 200. Uh, We'll see how the rest of this year goes. But if you know anyone that wants to be on the show, please reach out to me. Let me know. I'm Ryan Newpool at KNUP out on the socials. And uh, we'll try to get them on and and talk about what they're up to in this awesome uh, sports business, sports gaming, sports betting industry. All right. Until next time, take care, stay safe, and we'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.